that's what what we're gonna do here is we're gonna watch the trailer. Uh, I'm gonna be quiet while we watch it. Six minutes and fifty four. I won't be quiet for the whole time. Uh, and then we're gonna watch it again, and we're gonna kind of cut it down and stop it and pause it and stuff like that. Hi, I'm John, Hi, John Warner, Warner, game director for Anthem. Hey, I like this hub thing right off the bat. Freelancer. Praxley. Listen. Miller time. There's trouble. Big trouble. What did you do? <sighs> I made a mistake. I hired some people. They weren't freelancers. I know. They said they could handle it. And the price Stupid was right. Haggard. I thought maybe. Unbelievable. <laughs> You're right. It was stupid. The I'm sorry. Pixels. It's got the best pixels. They're still man. out there. Somewhere. If you could just bring them back. Anything you need. I'll get to it tomorrow. All right. In the world of Anthem, you and your friends are freelancers. The heroes who leave the safety of the walls of Fort Tarsus to explore. Well, I want to pause it right there because you'll notice that it it gave the impression that you're in this big city. But it actually, it, he just walked through a very narrow, narrow corridor that was packed with shit. But he was, it, you know, he, it didn't seem like he actually had access to the rest of that city. You know, this was a corridor. He had a guy come up with a mission. And then he goes to his, basically his launch pad to get his exo. Tomorrow. All right. In the world of Anthem, you and your friends are freelancers. The heroes who leave the safety of the walls of Fort Tarsus to explore the unknown and protect humanity. Let's join two players as they head out on an expedition. Hey, Paul. You ready to go? We're just grabbing some supplies. Just about ready. What are you going to use today? I decided to go with the Colossus. I'm going to use my Ranger. Try out some new upgrades. That's actually a pretty cool transition, though. It's like you get into it and then you launch from there. I wonder if there will be like Mass Effect levels of character customization as well. Like before you even start the game, uh, you know, you can like really customize because they, they did that close up right on our face. And I wonder how like customizable your characters will be. The suits look fantastic. Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable, so they look and play how you want. Bam, looking good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. I love that you can fly too, I think that's awesome. Hope we get shaders for them too. <laughs> this is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. I'll go low. You flank. That's a cool transition, too. Into the water. I like that. Yo, Wilson, how's it going, man? I can't wait to trick out the suit and make it crazy. Can you confirm shotguns OP? <laughs> Have you been in there yet? 
yet? I haven't. But we should do that later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. <laughs> I think we got some action ahead. Anyone? Anyone? We're under attack. Anyone in the area? We're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis' mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. I think it's huge. Scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Have time to use that mortar. That is dope. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he laughed after this covering fire. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> oh, come on. Be something good. I think I got one of those in Destiny. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jairus Wrath was a... Uh... <laughs> oh, yes! Jairus Wrath. Iron oh, nice. Banner weapon. Large-scale <laughs> world events like Shaper Stories are dynamic. Take my money, you off right? The path with the promise of new stories to discover. Superstarman coming. Okay, actually, let's get some more people. Hold on a sec. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, what's Kim, up? they were just making fun of you. I'm right behind you. So we got a four man fire team, right? I wonder if that'll be the match. Whoa. The storm is getting crazy. <laughs> so what are we supposed to do? Fly into it? All right, let's do this. See you on the other side. Our story is out there. All right. Subscribe to see our gameplay reveal on June 11th. I already saw it. All right. I want to go through it again one more time. Hey. <laughs> Holy shit, this looks dope as fuck, right? Looks promising, but we need to see more. So if you watch this scene, you can see there's not really, it doesn't look like there's a way to get to the rest of the city. It's literally just this path Perhaps that goes like, around the corner. Listen, you talk to this guy and just keep moving. People, they weren't free to handle it in the sorry. But they're still out there, somewhere. If you could just bring them back. Anything you need. Anything you need. You need dope loot, dude. I'm thinking Destiny 2 on my PS4 and this on PC. All right. In the world of Anthem, you and your friends are freelancers. The heroes who leave the safety of the walls of Fort Tarsus. Ally of the Weeks, Shadow the Jack. And protect humanity. That was kind of cool. Join two forces to explore the unknown and protect humanity. Shows you. The heroes who I don't know what the Ally of the, of the Week is. He's level 43. He's got a plus seven to. I don't know if that's going to be Frost or Electric. But I wonder if that's like the guy who you played with the most or the guy. There's no ramen shop. <laughs> Or, like, I wonder what that ally of the week, how that's judged. But it's kind of a cool concept, anyway. Tarsus. Is that actually the guy? Because that's the mech that your buddy just got into, right? Maybe it's the guy you play Explore with the, the unknown most? And protect humanity. Let's join two players as they head out on an expedition. Hey, Paul. You ready to go? We're just grabbing some supplies. Just about ready. What are you going to use today? I decided to go with the Colossus. I'm going to use my Ranger. Well, that's upgrade. another cool thing is that you have one character, but you can get into different mechs, and the mechs have different uses. Goliath, Ranger, 
Uh, so apparently, one would think that they'd have different, you know, uses and like speeds and weapon loadouts and stuff like that. Microtransactions, I would imagine. What game doesn't have them? Plans and Anthem, it'd be great. We don't know that kind of stuff yet. This has PvP. I hope it's not Benny Hill style like the division. <laughs> it's Javelin, yeah, that is a cool name. Warframes, totally Warframes. So again, you get to see the character's face here, and I hope that there's like good character customization. You know, so you really feel, um, you really feel connected to the character that you created. A bit of Titanfall in this as well, for sure. There's a lot of influences. Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable so they look and play how you want. I actually think this part is interesting. Bam. Because it Looking seems good. to show you this massive open world. Nice. You've got a but if you see like the skull and crossbones and you'll see more stuff like that Thanks. later. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. There was another one right there. Like these are like the locations it looks like that you can actually go to. And then you see the character fly in and you see like this, uh, this little guy up here. I assume that's another like symbol for a location. And then it becomes very corridor like for a while. So is that like in destiny, how we load into new locations by going between patrol zones? And it becomes like a very much a corridor. Is this what is happening right now? Is she's loading into a new location, and that's why it looks very corridor-like. Because as you come out here, it doesn't really seem to open up that much. It's still basically a, a corridor. You know, it's a jungle corridor, right? It doesn't look like she's got a lot of this options where she can go. To explore with your friends. Each javelin exosuit. Although it does look like there might be a path to the left there. Like how much exploration is going to be in here is what I wonder. Balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right. Let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from But I mean, that's direction. fucking gorgeous. Like, you just looking at it, it just looks amazing. Digital Foundries was implying today that this looked to be too good to be true console capable. <laughs> Seems like it's not true open world, but it's corridors. Yeah, similar to Destiny, right? It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure. Now, I like this, is that they, they see this really powerful character or really powerful enemy, and they decide to pass it by because they don't want to waste all their supplies. Does that mean you have limited supplies when you start a game? Like when you start a new mission? Are you... You have to bring all your supplies with you. Will you be getting drops? Like in Destiny, we get ammo that just drops to the ground. In this game, that might not be the case. You got to bring it with you. Well, I don't know. This guy. Well, that's a yeah, dope looking enemy. He seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. All right, I want to go back to here real quick because this is actually really cool looking. So as we're talking about corridors, like this clearly looks like a place you might be able to explore, right? Go in there, maybe check it out. Like, is that going to be a branching path? Is it going to be, is this what we're looking at? I'm wondering if it's just one big map. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Ahead. I'll go low. You flank. And this is cool. When she goes underwater, that's just, that's just neat. If this was an open world, the waypoint should still be there, right? One would think, although maybe not because she's on a mission. I don't know. Hang in there. Almost there. Not 100% so. This is clearly 30 frames, right? Yeah, it is clearly 30 frames per second. Not 100% sold on the the character design yet. Like, I like the exos, uh, but the bad guys, like that first big bad guy was cool looking because it was so big. Like, that, it was like an animal, and it was like beastly and nasty looking. 
But those little, like, robot-looking things, I don't know, man. They look super generic to me. I hope it looks as pretty unreleased. Me too. I haven't. Too. Oh, we should do that later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. If you look at... I can see why digital founders might be saying that this isn't console play. This is probably PC play. But you look... Or it could be on Xbox One X. I don't know. I don't know, really. But you look at, like... The, sh the shadows, you look at the fog, you look at the detail in the, the grass and the rock and the geometry and the characters are very detailed. It looks very good. I think we got some action up ahead. Anyone, anyone, we're under attack. Anyone in the area, we're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis mission. So I updated the mission up here when you got that little voiceover. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power. Did they do that, or is that that just was happening when they got there? Right, that big walker. Yeah, some missiles hit that. So that must be you the mission. Is javelin exosuit the guys you're saving are possibly in there? Power to combat. Not anymore. Oh, there are a lot of scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Have time to use that mortar. Who's the game developer? It's Bioware. The UI is boring. UI. This game is still almost a year away, so don't expect the UI to stay the same. Jumping but not jetpacking, does that imply it's not always available? I don't know. I don't know. That is a <laughs> big-ass explosion. <laughs> that looked really good. Yeah, give me some covering fire. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> oh, come so on. Oh, you pick up an Engram. Good. All right, so we pick up Jar's Wrath. It's a legendary vault rifle, level 35. I wonder if we can upgrade that rifle if it's level 35 forever. You know, once you pick it up, is it level 35 forever? Is this 2018? 2018. He's more open world. He went one way and she went another, but they join up. Uh, and then you got damage numbers, accuracy numbers, range, rate of fire, ammo. So that might be the amount of ammo you can hold. It goes up when you hold that. I mean, a lot of this stuff is going to change, right? Oh, Borderlands yes. loot style, it seems like, right? Oh, nice. Large-scale world events like Shaper Stories are dynamic and pull you off the beaten path with the promise of new stories to discover. Superstorm incoming. Okay, actually, let's get some more people. Hold on a sec. So this is cool, right? Is when they want to get more people in, the people just join them wherever they are. Now, that could be false, right? They could have just decided to stage this so that they're... Um, so that they're, they happen to be in the location that allows people to join in when they have this conversation. But it implies that people could just join you wherever, which would be cool. The storm look like the greater rifts from Diablo. It does, kind of. They didn't check the people they were supposed to be saving? No. <laughs> if this isn't a Destiny 2 killer, it is at the very least a Division 2 killer, right? Well, I mean, there's a lot of differences between this and Destiny, right? It's not a first-person shooter, so the people who are into first-person shooters and have gotten attracted to Destiny because of like all the extra stuff on top of the first-person shooter... It's, this isn't a first-person shooter. What this is is a looter shooter. It looks like it leans a little heavier into the RPG stuff, a little heavier into the storytelling stuff, uh, customization, you know, like that kind of stuff. So if you're more into the RPG side of Destiny, this may very well be the game for you. If you're into the PvP, hey, first-person shooter side of Destiny, hey, maybe not. Good. When these guys join in, I think this is kind of cool. It shows you their level. It shows you what their kind of proficiency is over here. I think that's kind of neat. Doesn't have to be a killer to just 
be something alongside. Right. The third person is, for me anyway, a little more of off-putting. For me too, Omega, I like first-person shooters. To me, it's much more fun to play a first-person game than a third-person game. But I do, I am very attracted to this game, and I love Mass Effect. And this is the guys who made Mass Effect, right? So this is very interesting. I'm right behind you. And I love that, you know, they right away show you can play with two players, you can play up to you can play with four players. I'd love to see, you know, them talk start talking about something that would be very much competition with Destiny is raids. I'd love to see bigger overall adventures with six people. <clears throat> Hi Twiggy XI, thank you so much. Keep kicking kitten. <laughs> thank you so much for that resub, man. I really appreciate it. Welcome back to the rabbit hole. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, IX Twig. They also made Mass Effect Andromeda. No, Aragon, they didn't. That was a different team that made Mass Effect Andromeda. The game that's developing this is the game that, or the team that developed original Mass Effect. Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. Andromeda was a separate team. Uh, it'll be coming back, Omega. Uh, it's just... We're, we're, we're replacing some of the older emotes and um, adding some new ones on top of that. So, you know, don't go crazy with fixing the commands because more stuff is coming. Whoa. But yeah, if we can get, you know, four this people on a mission crazy. like this, this looks fun. So what are we supposed to do? Fly into him? All right, let's do this. See you on the other side. Our story is out there. So that's the game, man, and it looks pretty dope if you ask me. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm really excited about it. This was uh, previously codenamed Dylan. Uh, we've been hearing about it for quite some time. I think you guys told me about it in uh, in um, this chat, and uh, I've been very interested. It definitely is a different game than Destiny, right? We haven't seen if there's any PvP. I don't know if the developers have said if there's going to be a PvP mode, but... What it looks like is if you like PvE in Destiny, this looks like it could kind of satisfy that that itch, right? It's got loot. It's got, you know, en aliens to battle. It's got places to explore. It looks cool. It looks very cool. So if you're into Destiny, this might be something you're into as well. Base magic versus XO Iron Man suits. It's a very difficult to choose. How about both? How about both? I think I'll be playing both games. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Anthem looks dope, and I want to play it. Um, knowing Bioware, they will work some kind of PvP into it. It may be. Maybe they do like a horde mode like they did for the... Um, the uh, What was that? Which one was that? Mass Effect 3, I think, was the first one they did that. 